Nigeria's annual inflation rate declined to 15.60% in January of 2022, a little lower from the 15.63% recorded in December 2021. According to the National Bureau of Statistics, the decrease could be attributed to a slight deceleration in prices of major component food, which now stood at 17.13% in January 2022, as against 17.37% recorded in December 2021. The report, however, indicates that inflation was higher for almost all other categories of commodities, primarily clothing and footwear, which rose to 15.4% from 15.1%. Transport rose to 15.1% from 15%. Furnishings also rose to 14.6% from 14.5%. Miscellaneous goods and services, 14.4% as against 14.1%. And alcoholic beverages and tobacco, 14.1% against 13.7% in the previous month. Now, the annual core inflation rate, which excludes the prices of agricultural produce, was flat at 13.87% in January, the highest since April of 2017. On a monthly basis, consumer prices were up at 1.47%, following a 1.82 increase in the previous month. There has, this has been a cause for concern for Nigerians, and many, if not all, feel the pinch of rising cost of commodities. How can inflation in Nigeria be managed? This is our topic on Nigeria Today on NTN News 24. Thank you for joining us. I am Lydia Ochi. Welcome back. Now, joining me in the studio to discuss this issue are experts in this field, Dr. Tochuku Okafo. You're welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you for having me around. And we also have Dr. Samson Galadima Simon. We appreciate your presence. Thank you. But before I get to them, let's quickly take a look at this report on what the Statistician General of the Federation is saying about inflation rate in the month of January. Let's join Comfort Amodo for the report. Latest data by the National Bureau of Statistics shows that inflation declined marginally in January 2022 after demand pressure pushed prices in December 2021, with the Consumer Price Index, which measures inflation, increasing to 15.60% year-on-year in January 2022. The Statistician General of the Federation, Simon Harry, who released the figures, is optimistic that the numbers sustained would decline in the year. On the state-by-state -state comparison, all items inflation on year-on-year basis was highest in Abuja, the Federal Capital Territory, with a figure of 18.59%, followed by Kogi, which had a figure of 18.28%, and Bauchi, 17.61%. On month-on-month -month basis, the food sub index increased to 1.62% in January this year, down by 0.57% points from 2.19% recorded in December 2021, and the urban inflation rate rising to 16.17% year-on-year in January 2022, from 17.03% recorded in the previous year while the rural inflation rate increased to 15.06% in January 2022 from 15.92% in January 2021. Now to my guests who will be giving us a clear picture on tonight's topic, managing inflation in Nigeria. Let me begin with Dr. Tochuku Okafo. Coming out of all the expenses of the festivities that usually greet the month of December into the conservative month of January, what is your assessment of January's inflation rate, which declined marginally at 0.3% to 15.60% from 15.63%? 
Yeah, um, thank you. Mm -hmm. So one of the um, interesting takeaways from the statistician's um, report was um, that Simon Harry was it debunked the argument of um, whether the inflationary pressures we experienced in December slash January does that increase of 15.63 was either yield tight pressures or actually base effects were enough. So there were arguments around that saying was it yield tight pressures or was it base effects that were wearing off and that's why the thing rose. So it cleared the air. So in his report he actually stated that it was actually yield tight pressures and that um, base effects was had no impact on it. However, he also said that um, the, the impact from the MPC decisions were actually reflected. Even though they weren't significant, they were reflected. So while that's a thumbs up, the downside on the other part is the, the, the economy's um, growth blueprint was actually um, earmarked on single digit inflation. However, we're now running on double digits, right? Mm -hmm. So since uh, we are in the 15% threshold, we are way off from the uh, um, single digit um, threshold. So the problem now, the problem now is how to navigate our way back. Mm. And then all through last year, there was this debate. I think Nigerians were uh, really, really, really upset at the rates they were saying. They say it was dropping. How can inflation be dropping while uh, uh, the prices of goods are increasing? I think it's better to actually clear the air before we go into that um, discussion. The concept there is there's a difference between inflation and inflation rate, right? Okay. Inflation in itself is the price of the good, the commodity in the market, while the inflation rate is the rate at which that price moves. In fact, moving away from this whole academic jargon, straight up, if you buy a shirt for 10 Naira, right, uh, in 2019, and uh, in 2020, it moves up to 20 Naira, that means that, that commodity has increased by 10 Naira. That is a 100% rate change. Mm -hmm. So it has increased by 100%. Reverse back again to 2019. If that same share that I bought in 2019 increased in 2020 to 15 Naira, it increased by 50%. Right? Yeah. So that rate of change is different. There's 50, there's 100. 100 is higher than 50. Mm -hmm. So let's go back to 2019 and start from the beginning. So if 2019 you buy it at 10 Naira, 2020 it increases to 20 Naira, what they'll report is that it increased by a hundred percent. If in 2021 that price increases by to 25 naira, that means there was a five naira uh, uh, addition. Mm -hmm. So to do the year on year, that was where people get the whole year on year misconstrued. Mm -hmm. To get the year on year comparison, you see it increased at a declining rate. Last it was 50 okay. percent instead mm -hmm. of 100 okay. percent. So when you say it increased at a declining rate. It sounds oxymoronic, mm -hmm. but that is what it is. It's increasing at a slower pace, mm -hmm. at a lesser pace, right? Mm -hmm. So when we have this at the back of our minds that the prices are stagnant, but the, the, the rates are undulating, we mm -hmm. can understand. So the price is still 25, right? Mm -hmm. But the, but the, what they call it, the rate is actually 50 percent mm -hmm. so that was why throughout last year it kept seeing it going at um 50 percent um it it kept declining and declining and people were like prices of goods are still increasing mm -hmm. so how are you saying mm -hmm. that the rates are declining that is what it means the rates are flexible while the prices are stagnant okay now that was quite academic though <laughs> now dr <laughs> samson <laughs> according to the report by the national bureau of statistics the current rate was as a result of the declaration in major component of food items. What will be your reaction to this? Um, the coal inflation still remains the same. It hasn't changed. So what has actually changed between December and January is the food inflation. So, and um, like uh, Dr. Toshiko earlier said, uh, inflation is still going up. It's just like uh, the rate is decelerating, is not growing as fast as it was growing. In, in January, mm -hmm. the growth wasn't as fast as it was in December. Okay. So, but there is still growth. And other, another component of inflation, headline inflation, which is general oil and comparison inflation, is um, energy inflation. So that's another part. So okay. the two of them contributed to making the headline inflation to be higher, uh, to be lower actually than it was in, in December. Okay. okay, now let me stay on you. This administration is making frantic efforts at making an imprint on the economy. By your own assessment, will you say CBN's monetary policy decisions are in the right direction to actually propel downward inflationary trends? The overarching reason for monetary authority anywhere in the world, and CBN is not an exception, is to ensure low 
stable and predictable prices. Mm -hmm. And um, the Central Bank of Nigeria has been trying, though uh, they have been holding the parameters steady for a while now. And the reason for holding it steady, the full inflation that we're experiencing is due to non-monetary factors. That means it's not because of money supply per se, as far as the central bank is concerned, is due to um, structural rigidities, mm -hmm. bottlenecks in the supply chains. So those things are outside the control of the central bank of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So that's why they have not been tinkering with the parameters. Mm -hmm. But um, I think the central bank may be living in denial in the sense that there is um, a monetary factor attached to inflationary pressure because of the ways and means mm -hmm. the central bank lending to the government. Mm -hmm. That has contributed. Besides that, the Central Bank of Nigeria is in charge of foreign exchange policy mm -hmm. and the Naira has been devaluing and depreciating. Mm -hmm. Officially, when you devalue officially by the monetary authority, is devaluation. Mm -hmm. But even the market forces have been acting and the value of the Naira has been falling. So when the value of the currency falls, that can also be inflationary. Yes, okay. Now, Dr. Tochuku, would like you to react to this. What, what do you think is needed if there must be a purposeful drive at keeping inflation down? Uh, all right. Um, if you look at the report, right, like um, Dr. Samson said, you would notice that um, food inflation was at 17.13, and in the last one year, it has been navigating the thresholds of 20% mm -hmm. to 17%. Now, the question in that is people ask why why is food inflation sustaining this high level of because that's what's really keeping us in double digits if you check yes. it so what is keeping this it is actually a, an insecurity problem in the food belt right mm -hmm. so uh, again people ask how is insecurity related to inflation the problem is if there are gunshots outside my house mm -hmm. and i decide to take that sacrifice to go to the farm if I'm going to the farm, I'm not going to spend five minutes, ten minutes. I'm going to spend a minimum of two hours. In two hours, I'm risking my life. So the, 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 the actual truth is I am putting a price on my life, not necessarily the goods. So when you transfer those prices to those goods, you need to know that scarcity drives value and value drives inflation naturally. Mm -hmm. So not everybody is going to risk their lives. So if I risk my life and I bring it, I think I'm going to put a price Definitely. on those goods naturally. Mm -hmm. So that in the food belt has been necessitating the high um, sustained price in uh, what they call it on um, food inflation. If you look at core, core has been in double digits, but it's because of supply chains, like um, Dr. Samson said. The, the, the supply chain disruptions have actually limited the amount of goods that come, which we import, mm -hmm. right? So we, if, if you look at the commodities that I actually that people can relate to, you see cars mm -hmm. and then you see the PS5, the cheap shortages and uh, from China actually make the production of these cars halted. So when there is scarcity again, value and then inflation. So that, that whole package just comes as a package. So when you do the aggregate, you see us still stumbling within the double digit of 15 to 16%. But should supply chains dissipate, I think the federal government should put an intentional, intense effort in fighting insecurity. And once insecurity is halted, and then supply chain, and then we should start producing. I think production, domestic production is also what should actually reduce our import dependency. And then import dependency reducing, um, security um, crisis reducing, in the medium term, inflation is definitely going to dissipate. That's true. In fact, the federal government is doing a lot to make sure we produce more food so that we eat what we produce. Exactly. Now, uh, Dr. Samson, the statistician general mentioned that inflation rate is highest in Abuja with 18.5%. What can we attribute to this? Uh, so many factors are responsible for high inflation in, in Abuja. Mm -hmm. um, the, the consumer price index has so many components. And one of the components is rent. Rent uh, has been going up. Mm -hmm. Besides that, the prices of food items in Abuja tend to be higher than other places because um, we are not really in the food belt of Nigeria. So some of these food items have to be transported. And we know that um, the cost of transportation has to be factored in the cost of the food item. Uh, besides that, um, the money bags, uh, these are Buja, and the inflation is when you have uh, so much money pursuing few goods and services. So there is so much money, probably higher more money in circulation in Abuja than other places. And then there is no commensurate output of products. 
So definitely the prices will go up. Okay. <laughs> That's so, so, so cool. Now, how do you explain the high inflation in places like Kogi and Bauchi states, which are the states following the FCT on the rate of inflation? Considering that the FCT, considering the fact that these states are not very buoyant economically. Yes. Um, um, in all honesty, there was a, a little readjustment there. If you look at the states carefully, I think Abuja and all the states come in fifth. Okay. I think Abuja is the fifth highest. There was, uh, there are states with 22 percent, there are states with 19 um, percent, and I think Abuja comes in at 18. But yeah, these states that are actually high, it still boils down to the whole. If you check the, uh, the, the report, mm -hmm. it still boils down to food inflation. And then the influx of mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. So from the insecurity torn states, if I can use that word, there is an influx of people from those states to states like Abuja, I think that's one of the reasons for Abuja okay. and all those states. Okay. So when there is an influx, the way he said it, mm -hmm. a lot of money pushing fewer goods which were already budgeted for, mm -hmm. right? You have a, 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 a likelihood of inflation, right? Okay. So it's 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 already premeditated. It is normal. Okay. So yeah. Now let's go on a break. We'll be back to continue the conversation. Don't go away. This is NTA News 24, broadcasting from Abuja. You can watch us anywhere, anytime, on the following platforms. Start Times, Channel 101, Greek TV, Channel 703, GS TV, Channel 419, and Go TV, Channel 46. For more information, log on to our website, www.nta.ng, or join us on our social media handles, Facebook at NTA News 24. For comments, suggestions and inquiries, send an email to news24 at nta.gov.ng or call us on the following numbers. NTA News 24. News and more news. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. It's Nigeria Today and we're talking about managing inflation in Nigeria. Our guests are still with us. Dr. Samson, going by the current issue of scarcity of fuel, what possible impact can this have on inflation rates in the coming months? Uh, of course, I, was, I, I read a story, the statistician general, Simon, Dr. Simon Harry, said inflation will definitely be affected. Mm -hmm. There will definitely going to be an uptick because energy is so important to the Nigerian economy, not only because um, energy prices have gone up, but it's going to have a ripple effect. Mm -hmm. It's going to affect other sectors of the economy. Mm -hmm. Expect um, food prices to go up, expect other items also to experience upsurge because mm -hmm. of the cost of energy. Uh, is the Central Bank of Nigeria that um, on its website it said that um, energy is arguably one factor that mm. affects all the other sectors, sectors. of the economy. Mm, so, of course, we should be expecting an upsurge okay. in the inflation rate. Ah, the way things are hard enough already. Now, Dr. Tochuku, <laughs> there are professional forecasts of an average. 13.5% inflation rate for the country in the year 2022. Do you see the country treading towards that direction? Yeah, yes. Um, it's, like they say, it's a forecast because there are unforeseen contingencies that could erupt at any point in time. Take, for instance, this um, issue of dirty petrol, mm. right? Uh, things like that, and coupled with the whole Valentine saga that came at the same time when that was all happening, Th those factors actually are the things that keep driving inflation. Okay, take for instance yesterday, um, a 10 liters of fuel was going for 5,000. So an average car wants to fill their tanks, they are going to use an average of 20,000. If an Uber driver is filling his car with 20,000, it's going to transfer it to the public definitely. And if he's transferring it, he's not going to transfer it in like one week, in the, in the near term, two months at least. For those that knocked their engines during their period and their generators, if they're going to replace those engines, they're still going to transfer it. So, so there's going to be a ripple, like you said, yeah. dominoes effect. And that dominoes effect doesn't just go in the, in the, in the flick of the finger right it takes time and it takes months so if if 
unforeseen circumstances like this keep coming up and keep cropping up. The problem is, as much as we are going to hit that 13, mm -hmm. we might be clocking 13 by, by lock, but we might, be, we might be scratching 13 on the surface, but more of 14. So if we are going to hit single digit inflation, I think it's time to start putting necessary things in place before this crisis hit us. It's very frustrating when you have the resources to navigate a situation and you allow it hit first before you employ those resources, right? Mm -hmm. So it's time we start employing the resources ahead of time as um, remedial measures to actually counter these effects when they come. Yeah. Okay, uh, uh, Dr. Sampson. Yes. So now, what is your forecast for inflation in the month of February? Uh, this month, um, inflation will experience an uptick because of the um, surges we saw in energy prices. Uh, I was reading an article that um, in Abuja, some parts of Abuja uh, sold for as high as um, 800 naira per liter. So of course that will be shown, not only, um, it, it, that, that will affect a lot of things, mm -hmm. including food and other items. So inflation will be higher, even the core inflation will be affected, not only food inflation this time around, all like in January, mm -hmm. where only the other items outside the core that were affected. And besides the uh, increase in, in price of fuel, um, there is a uh, the general uh, upward trend in the international price of oil. That will also be reflected in a lot of things in this country. So we should experience, we, we should expect higher inflation than what we saw in January. That is not good news. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Dr. Tochuku, what will be your advice to monetary policy ma managers in keeping inflation rates low this year? Um, first, I think it's, it's, it comes from a global perspective because I think the COVID-19 has linked all of us in this crisis. The U.S. is suffering it, Argentina is suffering it, everyone is suffering it. Uh, domestic inflation has a cyclical implication to imported foreign inflation. So if domestic inflation is high, we are going to dissuade foreign investors as well as domestic investors. If we dissuade investors, FX inflows are going to reduce. If FX inflows reduce, global trade is going to be hampered. Global trade hampers, we are going to devalue. Devaluation is going to lead to higher prices when you're importing and then we have imported inflation. So we are going to have a situation of cost as well as demand pool inflations merging and that's a potent mix of crisis. So if we are going to control this inflation, the best thing we have to do is the security begins at home. Mm -hmm. I think it's time we started harnessing the resources we have, right? No matter how small, and then whatever you have, make it um, um, what they call it presentable, such that the global market at some point will recognize you. Consistency brings recognition. If you gain the recognition, you gain value. When you gain value, the currency begins to gain some value, like I said. And then the cyclical process begins. And when that cyclical process begins, I think inflation will be a thing of the past in the medium term, say four or five years from now. Yeah. Four or five years? Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a long time. It, 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 it's a transition. It's not a, an event. Okay. Yeah. Dr. Samson, what will be your final thoughts as we round up this conversation? Well, all right. Um, we can control inflation. Uh, the primary, the overarching responsibility of the monetary authority, like I earlier said, is price stability. Low, stable, and predictable prices. And one of the tools that this monetary authority uses to control, uh, to ensure price stability is um, rates. So I think it's high time we increase our rates. Be besides that, um, we need to stimulate production. If a lot of goods and services are being produced, despite the amount of money in circulation, mm -hmm. I think inflation will be tempted. That's that, my last one. Thank that you. That is the hope of all Nigerians that we get to pay less mm -hmm. for what we're getting. Now, this is where we conclude the program. Our appreciation goes to our guests, Dr. Tochuku Okafo. Thank you for sharing your thoughts with us. Thank you. Thank you. And Dr. Samson Galadima Simon, thank you very much for your insight. You're welcome. Thank you, ISTN viewer, for watching. Remember, you can still watch this episode and other ones on www.youtube.com slash ntnews 24 hub I am Lydia Ochi. Thank you for watching. Good night.